Hey everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Simon Says Stamp, and I am showcasing this fun shaker card featuring components from the 2020 limited edition Easter kit. So each year, Simon, for the last several years, has done a limited edition Easter kit. It is always super popular, and this year's is no exception. It is so cute. I am taking just a few of the supplies that are included in this kit. It's really, really big. And I am going to be creating this Peking Bunny Shaker card. So I am taking some of the lemon chiffon cardstock included in the kit, trimmed down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I am taking from my stash the Simon Says Stamp Gingham Background Die with lemon chiffon ink. So both of those products are actually from my stash. And I am inking up the lemon chiffon cardstock for a tone on tone background. I love gingham and I love gingham all times of year. But I think depending on the colors you use, it's just very um, season specific. And for whatever reason, I am really drawn to yellow right now. And so I went ahead and did this tone on tone. And then I'm going to take another product from my stash. These are the Simon Says Stamp A2 Thin Frames, and we are gonna die cut that thin frame from this background panel. Not only are we gonna die cut the frame, but we are gonna die cut the Peking Bunny die that comes in the kit. When figuring out where to place the die, I have the sentiment from the Cottontail Wishes stamp set from the kit, and I am just laying that out there to give me a really good idea of where I need to line that up. And then I'm gonna simply die cut the thin frame in the Peking Bunny from this background panel we stamped. I'm gonna keep both the outline and the inside frame. I'm gonna discard that little thin frame and then I played around with a couple of options. Um, originally, I thought I would die cut the bunny, the Peking bunny, again from the flocked paper included in the kit and then just trim it and layer it over. I didn't like that. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do instead. I am gonna take a piece of the white flock cardstock from the kit and we are gonna die cut a panel with the Peking bunny. I'm also gonna use the Peking Bunny die, shift it around, and die cut that bunny from the panel we just die cut again to make the perfect circle opening. So I just simply shifted it around, taped it in place, and die cut it. You can see I have all these little scraps. It was basically upside down. That's giving me the per perfect circular opening. And then I'm going to line that up with my flock cardstock and die cut that bunny again. And then I took my paper trimmer and simply trimmed this down. I'm gonna just make some little pencil marks here. So this panel will fit directly behind my yellow gingham one. I'll show you what that looks like here. I, <clears throat> pardon me, I really like the layering better and look how cute. We're actually gonna inlay the insides of the ears and the nose before adding some black eyes with Nouveau Crystal Drops. So next, we are gonna go ahead and kind of grab all of the rest of the product we're gonna need. We're gonna use sequins from the kit, stamps from the kit, all of those great things. We also need to stamp our sentiment before we start making this a dimensional panel for a shaker card. Sequins tend to be a little thicker than a seed bead or something like that. So if you want them to shake, I always recommend doing a double layer of foam adhesive. And so anything you want to do before that, you wanna make sure that you are going to uh, get that done first. In this case, I wanna stamp my sentiment. I've also used the thin frame to die cut that white flocked cardstock for the little inlay there. And some of the pink cardstock from the kit to do the insides of the ears and the nose for the bunny. This sentiment, as I mentioned, is from the Cottontail Wishes six by eight stamp set included in the kit 
or available for individual purchase. We are going to stamp that sentiment with the Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing and Watermark ink right below the window opening, add some white embossing powder, and then heat set this. Now I took a dry paint brush to remove a few stray embossing powder flakes that were not exactly where I wanted them. And then I'm going to heat set that sentiment. Now that we have the stamping done on our middle panel, I'm going to take a white card base and adhere the outer frame right there to my card base or actually to another piece of the lemon chiffon cardstock. I wanted the back of my shaker window to be yellow and not white. With the bunny being white, I really needed a little bit of contrast, I feel like. Something I wanted to mention is you could do this same card with any of the cardstock colors included in the kit. So there's also blue and pink. And I think either one of those would be really pretty as well. Or maybe you make a trio of these or however many you need for recipients because I think they're just a really fun card. Shakers are always a good option. Um, they're very simple to make and just create such fun little interactive cards. Good for all ages. I am inlaying that flocked frame now. And then I am going to actually put my foam adhesive, or I'm going to, pardon me, adhere this panel to the white flocked panel so that we have the little peeking bunny. And then we're going to adhere this to a piece of acetate that I've trimmed down to fit behind. That's going to create the shaker window and it will also give us somewhere to adhere the inlay pieces for the bunny the insides of the ears, the insides of the nose, all of those little things. And then so that I can line up the card perfectly, I often, when creating a shaker, will put the foam adhesive on the back of the panel and then fill it so that I know exactly where I need to avoid depending on what kind of window opening I have. For this card, because it was going to be really tricky to try to line that up with my card base, I opted to put my foam adhesive on the card base itself and then we will be taking our Peking Bunny panel to that. So I am simply doubling up my Scotch foam adhesive and then we're going to frame out our opening. And I'm going to remove one side of the double-sided adhesive and I'm going to start with the sides and the top first and then we'll kind of move on to underneath that window opening. And you want to make sure when creating a shaker window that the foam adhesive is right next to each other so that none of the shaker material escapes. If you're using something like glitter or seed beads, that's even more important um, since they're so teeny tiny and they will escape through any little opening that there might be. Um, sequins are not going to be quite as delicate as far as that, but I still don't want them to maybe accidentally escape. I noticed that some of my acetate was not... Uh, trimmed quite the size of my panel and so I'm just taking a long pair of shears and trimming around my panel to get rid of any acetate that might be showing there so it just looks a little cleaner. I trimmed that acetate with my uh, trimmer and I didn't die cut it so it wasn't exactly the same size. We'll finish framing out our panel and then we're going to fill the shaker well with those awesome bunnies and heart sequins that are included in the kit. So these are really fun and I accidentally got way too many here. And they went everywhere. So I'm going to pick up a few of these extra ones and go ahead and put those back in the bag for storage. But look how cute, and the color is perfect. It will go with anything. It's really 
kind of nice and iridescent and it just provides a really fun shaker material. I'm the window I made is pretty small, but I think if you would do a bigger shaker window, those bunnies may show up even more. I think you get a little bit more of the color, that kind of iridescent tone to them in my particular card. We'll just peel off the backing paper now, and you can see how by putting the foam adhesive on the card base, it's making it so much easier to line up our panel. Otherwise, it would have been really tricky. And there is our little shaker window. So we only have a couple of finishing details left to do. You could die cut the bunny again, like you do to get the insides of the ears and the nose from black cardstock. But I opted instead to take Nouveau Crystal Drops in ebony black and add in those eyes. It also gives them a tiny bit of dimension and you don't have to die cut anything extra. I'm going to glue this panel or adhere this panel to my white top fold card base now. Isn't that gingham fun for spring? Now this is really simple and at this point it could really be done if you wanted it to but I am going to add a few finishing details including stamping You're a Good Egg from the Cottontail Wishes stamp set on that lemon chiffon cardstock and die cutting with a sentiment label die from Simon Says Stamp and adhering with foam adhesive along the bottom edge. And also taking a little die cut bow, die cut bow embellishment from a Lawn Fawn die set and adding that to the ear of the bunny. I think that's just a really fun and cute way to finish off the bunny ear. Finally, I'm going to take a lemon chiffon envelope, also included in the kit, and take some of the images from the Cottontail Wishes stamp set and stamp those on the envelope in the lower left corner of the panel using a clear embossing ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. This is going to give me a perfectly coordinating envelope and add a little bit of interest to that design. I don't know about you, but I really have been loving embellished envelopes. This is definitely a very uh, simple one, but I think it adds just a little something. There's also other envelopes included in the kit, so if you wanted to do a different color card in the same design, you would have an envelope to match. I stamped one of those solid hearts to start with, and then I'm going to take that little heart in an acrylic block and stamp it a couple more times to finish off this design. I hope you guys have enjoyed this matching card and envelope showcasing components from the Simon Says Stamp Limited Edition 2020 Easter Card Kit. The supplies I used to create my card and envelope are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says stamps, dies, and products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.